Hi, this video is sponsored by Bethesda, and there's a link to grab Redfall down in the description. Alright, so I did an entirely solo playthrough of Redfall. There, there's co-op if you actually have friends, but there's some useful stuff I learned that I should probably pass on to you. I'm Alex, if you're new here, hit subscribe, and these are my tips for mastering Redfall. Boom. Splat. At this point in your life, you've killed at least one million video game humans, and I don't need to explain their weakness, head plus bullet, but killing of vampires, well, I bet that number is a lot less. So, part one, vampire slain. Most vampire types won't die from just normal gun damage, and the most basic way to try to take them down is to fill them with bullets and slap them with a juicy steak right to the chest. If you're surrounded or have an elite on you, that tactic is going to be harder to make effective. Electricity, however, can finish off vamps without needing to get close for that melee finisher, though. It can also stun and assist with crowd control since it will automatically dust any low health vampires. There's electrical boxes like this or like this all over the place, and these will arc electricity to anyone nearby at roughly exactly this range. Since the distance those arcs can travel is pretty generous, it's a solid tactic to convince your enemies to fight you near those electrical sources. And seriously, they're everywhere. Fire functions somewhat the same, also dispatching vampires without the need for that close range finisher. The flare guns are great at halting wiggly vampires, since they will completely stop jumping around and panic as they are engulfed in flames. Start combat with a flare, and you can usually easily chip away their health before they start running you down again. If you're able to combine both electricity and fire, that can even make the higher tier vampires much more manageable with the stuns and DPS. Now let's talk about the stake launchers. No, not that, get that out of here, that wasn't funny the first time. The guns that fire wooden stakes can outright finish off vampires from a distance and deal incredibly high damage. Since ammo for this thing isn't super abundant though, I suggest saving the stake launcher for elite enemies only, because you already have the perfect tool for taking down lesser vampires, the UV light gun. Maintain shining the UV beam for long enough, and vamps will turn into lovely little decorative statues that you can easily shatter with a nice little fist bump. For a good chunk of the game, the UV gun should be your go-to tool for dispatching those lower tier vampires. However, for elites or enemies with multiple health bar segments, you'll see that the UV shatter doesn't outright kill them, making this much less useful against them. Or is it? If you fill two of your three weapon slots with the UV gun and stake launcher, you become the ultimate vampire slayer MVP. Use the UV light to freeze them in place, swap over to the stake launcher, aim for that head, and you can deal a ludicrous amount of damage with this weapon combo. Enjoy. Now, a few quick bonus vampire tips. If you see a watcher locking down an area, throw all those tactics I just explained out the window. Just shoot them in the head because they don't need to be staked. Especially on the higher difficulties, these siphoning vampires can quickly ruin your day with their ranged blood suckage. Either bravely run away in the opposite direction to cancel their lock-on, or you can use the environment to break their line of sight. If you're up against one of these, make sure you have a nearby rock, tree, or most useless co-op teammate to hide behind. When you come across this poisonous red fog, look out for one of these weirdos that's emitting it. Make sure you always have one UV gun on you, or at least in your backpack at all times, because shining that on those things will quickly soak up all that gunk and let you shatter them for good. Part 2. Exploration and Gear when you find a vampire nest, those will send you into semi-randomized little areas, and you can get a ton of loot if you do them correctly. When you make your way to the final room, you'll free some victims and expose the big heart, and when destroyed, it'll spawn this loot container. 
Wait, don't open it yet. Make sure you spot all of these red crystallized spots first, or assign teammates to certain ones. As soon as you take that loot in the main container, a countdown timer will start and quickly shoot all of those red crystallized spots to find which one is the real exit. However, don't immediately leave, because each of those red spots you opened have multiple loot containers filled with gear. Mad dash all around to those extra spots and grab as much loot as you can before extracting, and you'll come out with a much greater haul of gear. A few hours into the campaign, your actions like killing elite vampires and completing quests will start building up this meter that says, The Vampire Gods are watching you! Whoa. When it's full, a big red lightning storm will start, and a special vampire will start hunting you down. But this can be a good thing though, since they guarantee a drop of high tier gear. I found an easy way to build up that storm meter to summon these bosses on purpose, by using these cars with the flashing red devices on them. Alarming the cars with the car's car alarm is another way to raise that storm meter. If you just run around, you can find those alarmed cars pretty easily and start a storm. Killing the boss of this one just happened to get me the Pacific Grim Shotgun, which is a unique weapon that's covered in barnacles. From this guy, he dropped a special pistol which came with a modifier that makes headshots deal 75% more damage. Ooh. I think we're going to need a montage. A royalty-free John Wick montage. Never leave home without maxed out lockpicks and rear wire kits. Lockpicks can open locked doors, obviously, but they can also get you into trunks of cars and hidden safes, which will spit out some easy loot. Rewire kits can also unlock certain things and can reprogram turrets to be your best buddies. That's a good boy, yeah. Thorough exploration is definitely rewarded in Redfall, especially for finding these blue glowing Gravelock items. There's a hundred of these hidden around, and they build up this meter which adds a permanent bonus to your character. And last, check the bathrooms. These toilet paper bundles must be straight out of 2020, yielding a whopping 450 monies just for picking them up. Binoculars, $50. Gas mask, $75. Triplet of teddy bears, $150. Gold watch, $50. A package of paper for your butt, priceless. And those were just a few of the tips I had for you today that should hopefully be useful when you're working your way through Redfall. Now a big thanks to Bethesda for sponsoring this, and hooking me up with Redfall early, which let me help them help you help me. Yeah, everyone wins. As always, I'm Alex, and I'll see you again real soon.